Yeah, we're recording. What's the game that's coming up? Okay, so I'm working on a new board game. It's called going to be called Cthulhu Wars. It's three to five players. Um, you got a map of the Earth. In fact, if you come along with me, can you follow me with mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Okay, come on here. I'll show you some of the, the preliminary version of it. There we go. So this is the pre-release version of the map. Looks kind of like Risk, as you can see. And you have an army of units that wander across the map, conquer it, have different spells. You've got a, uh, a piece of paper, which will eventually look much better than this, <laughs> showing, showing you which spell books you can get, the stats of your creatures. Um, for example, here's, here's Great Cthulhu. Um, he, he has Cthulhu himself, plus Darkspawn, Shoggoths, Deep Ones, and Cultists. These are the things he's trying to do. He has, he has spell books right in the bag, like that. He brings out that do special things. For example, Shoggoths can absorb other creatures to increase their combat power. And as you're trying to conquer the world and achieve victory on the Doom track. When it gets to the top, <laughs> you win! So it's a it's four player, only one guy can win at zero sum. There's a lot of depth to the strategy, and it's pretty much all about conquering the Earth as Cthulhu, Nyarlathotep, or others of the Great Old Ones, the Yellow Sign, or whatever. Right, which I'm not a gamer, as you know, which differs from a lot of games. I, I don't know very many games where you play the monsters. Right. This is this is the humans are only here as cultists, right? You, it's just the monsters cleaning off the earth. The stars are right, and there's now squabbling for who will have final. Yeah, control. so that's quite so, a quite a difference between any difference. other games. Yeah. yeah, you play Arkham Horror. You're trying to hold off the, uh, the the catastrophe. You play Elder Sign. You're trying to hold off the catastrophe. In this, you are the catastrophe. You haven't been held off, and now we're going to see who who remains in charge. And not only that, if you're not a gamer, or even if you don't game much, the bonus is the monsters that the you're going to get. The bonus is the monsters. We're making figures. These are not the real figures. These are the scammers from other games. Right. The, the actual figures are uh, 28 millimeter scale, like this. There's a 20, 28 millimeter scale figure. And uh, up to six or seven inches tall for Cthulhu. So when you get the game, there's 80 figures in uh, 28 millimeter scale, ranging from the cultists up to the, you know, shoved Niggurath herself and her Dark Young and all her minions. So you have all these cool figures that can be used uh, for any game that uses the same scale. For example, Call of Cthulhu. You know, they work fine for that. They'll work fine in uh, a game such as Zombicide or anything that uses the 20 oh, awesome. figure. So. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, you're going to get those figures so you can Those show figures them to are being made right now, sculpted right now in yeah. England. I don't have a copy of them here in hand. If you look at my uh, Facebook album called The New Board Game, I'm on Facebook under Andy Peterson, P-E-T-E-R-S-E-N, I've got a lot of images of the sculpts there and the concept art. And I'll add a couple of them beneath this link with a link to there. Awesome. And we're also going to be putting up a, uh, a website soon, CthulhuWars.com. It's going to have okay. a lot more stuff on the game. We've been playtesting a great deal. The playtesters all love it, and most of them don't know anything about the Cthulhu Mythos, but the ones that do love it even more are the ones that don't still like the game. They just have to be reminded right. who Neurothotep is. Well, <laughs> I'm pretty well known in the board game industry, and I have a lot of, of former co-workers and such that now work at robot entertainment and the like, or, or teach at, the, at universities, and they're usually pretty eager to come try something out new I've done. So, uh, in general, they seem to agree this is the best thing I've done in some time, so I'm pretty happy with it, too. Do you think it's definitely going to be sometime this year? I think, we're, well, I, I'm expecting that we will have the Kickstarter in less than a, up in less than a month, and that we will have the game uh, printed and published and with all the figures out sometime this summer. Awesome. So, I see no reason to delay once we get... Y any ideas on price yet? Um, it's looking expensive, because... The, uh, the plastic figures are so large and, and detailed, and some of them are resin. Right. So I'm trying, the original whole, whole hope was to keep it down to a thousand bucks, but for 80 full-size plastic miniatures and a big map, much bigger than what I showed you, that's just the, you know, the, the pro top. Map, right. And, car, and cardboard counters and stuff, 120 bucks maybe. I'm hoping to keep it under 150. We may do a, uh, a, a less expensive version of it, which is PDF form, where you just have counters. But, I mean, how, that's not cool compared to having a, a six-inch tall Cthulhu. Well, from what you've showed me so far when we, and what we talked previously, 100, about 120 or, or so doesn't actually sound very that bad. That's no, pretty good-looking no, stuff. No, for a game with this many large yeah. figures, that's, 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 that's reasonable. But, it's, you know, it's, times are tough. And, yeah, but, yeah. 
What kind of Kickstarter rewards do you think? Or well, we have got the that most far? obvious one is to get a copy of the game. Right. And it's going to be cheaper to get it as a reward from Kickstarter than, uh, than in the store. That's one of the bonuses you get for signing on Kickstarter. Okay. We're also going to have the expansions, which you can be in line to get. There, the first expansion has uh, is the Opener of the Way, which is the Hawks of Thoth. Second expansion is the Sleeper, which is Sathagawa and wizard, his wizards and serpentmen and stuff. Third expansion is the Windwalker, um, with his assortment of creatures, including Ron Tagoth, if you remember him from the horror of the at the museum. Mm -hmm. But uh, and then there's other expansions. We have some new maps: Primeval Earth, Yagoth, you know. Um, there are we're looking at doing a an Azathoth expansion. Not that like Azathoth is someone that you'd be as a faction, but he'd be like a neutral faction anyone could access, you know, because that's kind of how Azathoth rolls. So we've got lots of ideas for new figures, and that's that's what some of the kicks, the, the, the bonuses would be. We also are looking into making custom dice and T-shirts and other fun trash like that. Oh, well, that'll be great. So the T-shirts swag. Gonna be, they're gonna be four <laughs> T-shirts, one for each faction. So you pick which faction you like. So you want like. The Black Goat faction, you get the Black Goat t-shirt right. with Shubnagar Wrath. And if you like the Yellow Sign faction, you get that t-shirt. So, um, Anything else you want to say about the game? Um, watch for it on Kickstarter. It's going to be up soon. Uh, look for CthulhuWars.com. Uh, and uh, I hope to have more information through Mike soon. Um, I'm going to annoy you with a couple more questions okay. on gaming. I, You and I were watching movies earlier, and between one movie you said that a lot of your ideas come from nightmares and so they do, forth. actually, yes. I, I, am, I am subject to nightmares, uh, and I have learned over the years to use these as ideas in my game. Many of the levels I did in Doom and Quake, some of the scenarios I did in Age of Mythology, um, and other games, I've, video games I've done, came pretty much right out of nightmares I had. So. Can you give any examples without going catatonic? <laughs> 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 Since they are um, nightmares. Sure, sure. Um, I, I've got a. Uh, here, here's an example. I had a, a, a nightmare once about a, uh, a an area inside some kind of enclosed space, a building or something. But the, but it consisted of gigantic chasms going endlessly down with thin bridges over them. Oh, wow. And uh, as people, uh, you try to crawl, and it was like shrieks and stuff going on in the background, and things that I could never fixate my eyes on as I looked around. And so, you know, I was. I, had, I couldn't stay where I was in the dream. I had to move across the narrow bridges. So when I woke up, uh, this immediately went into a Doom level, which is based on narrow passages over mm -hmm. long drops. And in, in the level, I put lava because I can't have them go endlessly down. But it was still bad to fall off them. So that's one <laughs> example of a nightmare I had. So oh, wow. Actually, as long as you're there, what the heck, let's show you some of the figures. So here is Nyarlathotep. Here's the model they're building for it. He's going to go into casting pretty soon. This guy is 28 millimeter saw, a little taller an inch, and there is the big N himself, along with this mysterious groove in his, in his uh, mouth tentacle, which we won't go into the details in that. <laughs> and then here is... But it was very well thought out. I oh, I liked that. it a lot. <laughs> and this... Oh, yeah, the Dark Young. Yes, let's look at the Dark Young. So this is this is the Dark Young that we built. And I think he's he's pretty adorable. Oh, yeah. See, isn't he, isn't he great? Be proud to have that be one of your minions, right? Oh, I would be. Yeah. We have kind of a... There he is again. We, except with less tentacles. That's an earlier version of him. We, we've, we have kind of an interesting take on Shub Niggurath, but I think as long as you're there, let's show you the, the Cthulhu, because Cthulhu rules. There he is. Check out that guy. This cultist in front is, again, 28 millimeters tall, so he's like 6 or 7 inches. And I think he's absolutely adorable. I like the texture he's got, you know, the way the tail wraps around. He's not always drawn with the tail. I'm not sure I picture him normally with the tail, but his tail works for this guy. You know? That's true. And I, I haven't either, but that, that looks I really guess it's great. I a shapeshifter, so it doesn't, it, you know. But I like the fact if you look at his hands, he doesn't actually have a thumb. He's got, like, or got a thumb in each end. It's not like a human hand. And then again, I'm never sure if Cthulhu should have eyes or not, but again, it works for this guy. He's, he's pretty good looking Cthulhu. So I think there's another one. Well, uh, I think it was, I think HPL drew him with like either six or eight eyes, and I actually don't think HPL's drawing of Cthulhu is very terrifying. No. This is much, but you much can, better. But you can make an eight-eyed Cthulhu that would be terrifying, you know, or yeah. an eyed one. Um, the way HPL drew him, he's kind of got this big pot belly. Well, HPL is not known for his, uh, his artistic abilities, <laughs> right? No. Um, so you've seen a lot of pictures of the cultist, 
Um, here he is, complete with his Necronomicon or whatever he's reading out of. Yep, because this is a game with no good guys. Well, like, well, except if, all the people if you're everyone's trying to bad, destroy. Everyone's bad. was good, right? It's a, it's right. a morally neutral. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If, I mean, the the best way for humanity to survive is now is to be a cultist. So here, these are the good guys, I guess. Because those guys in those desecrated cities sure aren't going to help us any. Um, and there's more stuff available if you come look at the. Oh, here's the undead. Let me show you the undead. Okay. Oops. What I like about this undead is that it is. Like, it looks kind of like a zombie that was mummified and then mutated. It has, like, a tentacle going on here and mummy bandages, and it's it's clearly not just a zombie. It's something awful. It doesn't even have eyes. So, I like that Undead. Undead work for the yellow sign, so if you love Undead, then yeah. play him. Yeah. And uh, over here... Awesome. This is my original acrylic painting. My cost, oh, excuse this. We're going to have a baby shower here on Saturday, and so, like, some of the stuff is out. I'm not sure if he fits with the baby shower, but there he is. So this is an original acrylic painting by Tom Sullivan that he did for me. He has the rights to use it as, and sell posters of it. So if you want one, you can get it from Tom. Mm -hmm. um, however, we are also, the current plan is that we want to use this for the cover of the game. So if you see one of these in the game store, because you were too cheap to contribute to Kickstarter, be sure to pick it up then. So. And the little giraffe or whatever is not included. The giraffe? Is that what that is? Um, maybe. <laughs> He's not included, whatever he is. He's not going to be on the cover of the, of the cover of the box. No, he's too cute. Although it does look like Cthulhu's getting ready to take him out. Right. That is an extremely scary depiction. I love that Cthulhu. And he actually, really yeah, is barely visible there in the back. But most, oh, of the, yeah. most of it was just the waves and the, the storm and it rising from the sea. Yeah, I didn't realize that was going to be the board cover. Thanks for showing me that.